What starter type chameleon should you get? Will you choose a fire type, grass type, or a water type? Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, let's get into what kind of starter chameleon should you get? What are good starters? What are not good starters? What do I have? What am I gonna show you? The first thing we need to start off with is what is captive bred and what is wild caught? First and foremost, choose a captive bred pet Pokemon chameleon. Wild caught chameleons tend to be under tremendous stress from the capture and shipping process and are much more likely to be carrying a heavy parasite load. This combination of things makes it much more likely that a wild caught chameleon will be more susceptible to illness than a captive bred chameleon. Concerns with depletion of natural populations and animal welfare are also reasons to avoid purchasing non-captive bred chameleons. Most pet chameleons are not difficult to breed in captivity, therefore there should be no reason to have the wild caught reptile, plus most are endangered. You need to choose a healthy chameleon. The general appearance of a chameleon can give you clues to its overall health. Some things to look for when examining a potential chameleon include straight limbs. Do they have bent legs or bowed leg appearance? That can indicate metabolic bone disease. And the ability to get a good grip on branches. Are they alert with bright eyes? Chameleons who spend a lot of time with their eyes closed during the day are likely sick. Their eyes should also not be sunken. Sunken eyes are a sign of dehydration. Clear, bright coloration. Sometimes a brownish color is normal, but a dark or crab looking chameleon is sick or too cold. No signs of mouth rot, which means no green or cheesy looking patches in the mouth, and a clean overall with healthy looking skin. You want to watch out for wounds, scratches, or bruising. Now, choosing your type of chameleon, especially for starters, is going to be very important. I don't recommend getting a chameleon as a starter reptile, but if you choose to do so, I'm going to help you out. Each chameleon, and each type of chameleon basically, has a different set of requirements. Um, as far as humidity, care, temperature, lighting, things like that. I'm not going to get into detail here, but make sure you pay attention to that. And once you choose, hopefully you can choose based on this video alone. Once you choose, just go ahead and Google up that kind of chameleon and, and see what's required. So let's start with some uh, common type of chameleons. Now I've owned one of these, it's called a veiled chameleon. And among the types of chameleons, the veiled chameleon is the one most commonly recommended for the beginning chameleon owner as it is the one that seems to adapt most readily to captive conditions. Now remember that chameleons in general are not good as beginning reptile, I cannot stress this enough, due to their complex needs and susceptibility to stress, especially while you handle them. But if you're a seasoned reptile owner and are ready to take that next step to the veiled chameleon, well, that might be the right step for you. Now veiled chameleons only live for about six to eight years in captivity and males are the larger of the two sexes, growing to be about a foot long, not including their tail. My Veiled was a female. She was kind of tiny and there's a pet store near me and they have an absolutely gigantic male Veiled Chameleon, the biggest I've ever seen, and he's still got like a year to grow. These things grow until they die. They just, it's just non-stop, okay? Now Jackson's Chameleon, they're popular for their small horns. They've got three horns. Jackson's Chameleons are not fond of handling, but can live up to 10 years in captivity. They're not as colorful as some other types of chameleons while they're young, but as they mature, they can grow into brightly colored individuals. They've got these three horns. It reminds me of the Triceratops. I don't know if they're descended from them, but if anything is, it's these guys. I've never owned a Jackson's Chameleon, but from what I can tell, they're about the only chameleon that's actually social. So people actually put some of these together, multiple in the same enclosure, and it's, it's kind of cool. They're, they're really popular down in Florida. People have a lot of them down there. They're not native to there. Neither are Veilds. Veilds are actually invasive down there, and you'll find them in the wild. You won't really find the Jacksons in the wild, but people in Florida tend to have Jacksons and they'll put them outside on their little patio. It's kind of cool. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes. This is my favorite type of chameleon. It's the one I first owned and then I got a veiled, but this one's called a panther chameleon. At over a foot in length, the panther chameleon is known not only for their size, but also their incredibly vivid colors. Their lifespan is short, they're territorial, and not suited for regular handling, but many people enjoy caring for them so that they enjoy the bright colors they display. These things literally look like tree candy. Panthers come in all variety of colors. Um, you could see my original video. It's got a red panther chameleon. He's an ambilobe. There's a lot of different localities, which I'm not going to get into here. But he was red. He had a red body and he had a white bar, white slash blue bar running across his body. And uh, he was really pretty. And my new chameleon, Chroma, he is also an ambilobe panther chameleon. Same locale, same exact kind of chameleon, but he's blue and orange and red and green. He's got all the colors. He's turquoise, kind of. So when you walk in a pet store, you're typically going to see a veiled chameleon. Please do not get these things from pet stores. Um, they don't really 
they're not it's not great okay they're typically sick they've got metabolic bone disease they're not fed correctly their humidity is not okay they get eye infections don't get a veiled chameleon from a pet store when you get a chameleon you need to go through a breeder and I'm not gonna link any you can google them there's plenty out there especially on Facebook the Facebook pages and the Facebook groups have a lot of good information there but a veiled is typically the easiest and now how they'll get you is the veiled chameleons are cheap and by cheap I mean sometimes you'll find them for like thirty dollars well it's because they're invasive to Florida and they just wild catch them and it's, it's not okay don't do that you'll get one that's bred the bred ones typically have a better personality a better temperament they're more easily handled veiled chameleons actually don't they really don't like to be handled at all and you'll see it everywhere everybody says panther chameleons are harder to handle nah it's not okay. <laughs> not in my experience my veiled chameleon hated me but you can see from my other videos the viral ones specifically that my panther chameleon was he was so chill he was a really cool little dude and when you go to get these you know it's 30 bucks it's you know you're like okay well it's cheap no it's not cheap these are not cheap animals you're gonna spend thirty dollars on the chameleon but then you're gonna spend like five hundred dollars on the enclosure then you're gonna spend another thirty dollars a week in food you have to make sure that you have the money to fully take care of this animal the price of the animal is actually the cheapest part unless you go with the panther chameleon then it's kind of not the cheapest part for example a good panther chameleon from a reputable breeder for example mine was like six hundred dollars well it's because he's been bred for 14 generations to have blues in a species that's typically red so you're gonna get what you pay for the temperament though you you can't really pay for that you just have to get lucky and it's the luck of the draw when i began with my red chameleon timo the panther chameleon he's a red body blue bar ambelope and he didn't like me at all he didn't trust me but over time i built trust and i'll do a separate video on how i did that if you've watched all my other videos, you kind of know how I do that, but I'll do a specific one later. But you have to gain their trust. I mean, it's like any animal. You have to gain their trust. You have to, they, they have to associate you with food and water and safety and warmth. And my new chameleon, Chroma, he was a baby and he didn't like me at all. And now that he's about seven months, he's gotten to the point where he just runs out of the cage towards me. Instead of running from me, when I open the cage, he runs to me. And then he just wants to hang out and sometimes he plays pranks you'll have to see my other videos for that but he's he's got quite the personality and every animal you have to understand even chameleons have a distinct personality so when you go to get your very first chameleon what i want you to do is take a long hard look at exactly what you're wanting from this animal and then you need to take a look at your budget and then go Google and research that specific animal. Now, nobody really knows a lot about chameleons. You're gonna see conflicting information everywhere, but there is good information like what kind of UVB bulb they need, what heat they need, what their humidity needs to be, what the temperature needs to be. Go look at all of that and get back to me. Good luck.